to welcome everyone to our Every Nation N1 City service um, online. We welcome you to celebrate with us. Um, and my name is Bongani. Good morning, everybody. And my name is Lulama. And if you're joining us for the first time, we are a church that loves and honors God. We love people. We make disciples that transform society. And so today we will be continuing with our Holy Spirit service. And would like to encourage and invite you to also join our encounter service tonight. Indeed. Um, and at this time, I'd like to introduce the band. And before I do that, I'd like to just um, pray. If that's okay. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning as we um, worship you, Father God. We um, pray that, Lord, um, you be, you cover the band, Lord God, and um, you be with them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray. Thank you. Oh 
Sometimes I feel you, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll hear you, sometimes I won't. But this time, Lord, with all my heart and all my soul. When you feel distant and darkness near, my faith is waiting through doubt and fear. And this I know, with all my heart and all my soul.
How powerful and mighty, so wonderful and loving our God. He's forever worthy, forever full of glory, our God. Most righteous, indescribable is our God. Most righteous, indescribable is our God. The angels cry out, they cry out. To the one and only King who is seated on the throne. The angels cry out, they cry out holy to the risen Son of God, the Savior of the world.
They cry out holy to the risen Son of God, the Savior of the world. And what an amazing and inspiring way that the band have led us this morning. We certainly believe that the angels are indeed crying out. And it is with that that we want to take this time to thank you for your tithing and your offering and encourage you to continue to give in the way that you have been. The ways of giving are up on your screen right now. Under your grace, your mercy amazes me. Under your wings, your shadow covers me, a promise of love, where my heart is safely undone. Speak to me, Lord, your servant is listening over the noise, I hear you whispering. My hope has come, and my heart is safely undone. I found my fortress in you, and my soul is anchored. And so this morning, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce one of our senior pastors and leaders, Pastor Marlon Hartnick, who heads up our Every Nation Easter River Church. This morning, he is going to be bringing our word as we continue with our Holy Spirit series. Greetings, Every Nation in One City. What a joy to be with you this day. I bring regards from our Every Nation North family, and we certainly trust that all of you are well. I'm honored to share the word of God with you, and I'd like to thank Pastor Gillian for the opportunity while simultaneously acknowledging all the other pastors and leaders. Now, I'm not sure if there's a topic I enjoy speaking on more than the one I'm about to address today. But before we get into that, let's pray as we ask for God's blessing upon the ministry of the Word. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for your Word. We bless you for the privilege that we have to listen to your Word. Father, we know that your Word is powerful. We know that your Word, Lord God, will divide asunder joint and spirit and bone and marrow. And we thank you for the power thereof. We bless you, Lord, that those needing just an injection of your word, this they will receive that. So I pray that even as your word goes forth, that you touch lives this day, God. We pray that you touch hearts and minds and even bodies to your honor and to your glory. Bless our time together, we pray. And always, God, it is our prayer that your word would change and transform us this day. So we ask that we would not only be hearers of your word, but it is our heart's desire that we would be doers thereof as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as I introduce today's message, I do so by sharing a personal account. You see, a few weeks ago, we had a problem at home with our stove. The plates were all fine, but the oven, for some other reason, wasn't working. Now, during the lockdown, We'd enjoy starting to bake bread, bake cake, and making all sorts of other food dishes, but this was no longer possible. Now, my initial uneducated assumption was that it was the element of the stove, since there was no heat coming to the oven compartment. However, when a technician came out, he said that he first needed to assess and look at the source of the problem. So he disconnected some parts, and then he used some equipment, and within two minutes, the oven was fixed. It was not the element as what I thought it was initially. Now, while elated, my wife Mary and I were also perplexed. I mean, what was the problem and how is it able to be fixed so quickly? Well, as the technician explained, it was a connection problem where no power was reaching the element to warm the oven. So there was no problem with the stove or the element. It was simply a connection problem. Now, this made me think about many believers. We have all the parts, but a loose connection could cause us to be void of power in order to fulfill our calling and reach our destiny in Christ. You see, when God saved us, He gave us all the necessary parts for our spiritual life and for victory. 
and having a victorious life in Him. However, our spiritual lives would not work out if we are not plugged in or connected to a divine power source. We have not been created to work on our own. God never intended for us to live the Christian life on our own. So what is this divine source that we are speaking about? And how do we get connected to it? And I suppose that is the big question that we all may have. You see, we serve a God who is triune, as, as it would be said, Father, Son, and Spirit. And today, in today's message, I'd like to speak on the topic which was already introduced last week, and that being about the third person of the Trinity, namely the Holy Spirit. The sermon title is just quite simply, The Holy Spirit, Person, Power, and Presence. Now, as Pastor Rene mentioned last week, it would be impossible to share everything on the Holy Spirit in merely two sessions. I am, however, praying and trusting that you would have a deep desire to know Him more and experience more of Him after this series. As you would note from the sermon, we're going to be addressing three key points this day. So let's start with point number one, that being person. Now, I am sure that Many of us have seen catalogs, we've seen brochures, and sometimes when we purchase certain items, they may inform us that some part is not part of the package which they are promoting. You need to purchase that part separately. Differently stated, some catalogs would say to you that this part is an optional extra. Now, when it comes to our Christian walk and faith, the Holy Spirit certainly is not an optional extra. He is at the heart and the core of our lives. Kevin J. Connor states the following, and I quote, The Holy Spirit is the third divine person of the Godhead, co-equal, co-eternal, and co-existent with the Father and the Son, end of quote. So he's not merely an active force or just an influence. The Holy Spirit is God himself. Now, the Holy Spirit is mentioned more than 90 times in the Old Testament with at least 18 different titles. In the New Testament, he's mentioned more than 260 times, along with 39 different names and titles. And we know that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon a certain elect few. However, Joel 2 verse 28 has the prophecy that the Holy Spirit would be poured out upon all flesh. As we look at God's Word today, we start off with John 14 verses 16 and 17. And I'm reading from the ESV, from verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. You know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. Now, the background of this particular text is that Jesus had just told His disciples that He was going to leave them. Now, this was disastrous, as you and I can well imagine. And so probably one of the big questions the disciples would have had was, how were they going to make it? Since the one person whom they loved, whom they followed, and who they gave everything up for, was now declaring that he was about to leave them. Jesus spoke to them about going to prepare a place for them in heaven. Now, that was all good and well, but their current reality was that they were still on the earth. And many Christians believe that they would be much better off if Jesus had physically walked on the earth with them. Jesus, however, has a different view. And so he comes and addresses their concern about the fact that he will no longer be with them in verse 16 when he says that he will ask the Father and the Father would give them another helper. Now those are two key words, another helper. The first of these words is the word another, and in the Greek, it's the word alas, and it means another of the same sort. This is the opposite of another Greek word, which is heteros, where heteros means another of a different sort. So Jesus was saying to them and promising them that he would send another comforter, another like himself, not a different kind, but the same kind. Jesus was therefore saying to them that he was not going to send them a lesser or an inferior version, or if you permit me to say so, 
a cheap substitute of himself. The second key word is the word helper. And in the Greek, this is the word parakletos or parakletos, as some say. But this word means called to one side to assist or one who pleads another's case. Now, this term suggests both capability and adaptability for giving aid. This means that the Holy Spirit is not only capable or able of coming to your aid, but He can adapt to the aid you require. That is so amazing and so powerful. In other words, He doesn't just help in one particular area. He can help in whatever area you require help and aid in. Therefore, in the same way that we would have derived benefit from Jesus being on earth, we can derive the same benefit from the person of the Holy Spirit because He is another like Jesus. He's of the same kind, and as Jesus said, He is the helper, just as Jesus was, the amazing person of the Holy Spirit. Point number two then, power. So we've looked at person, now we're looking at power. The Holy Spirit, as we said earlier on, is not just a force, and He's certainly not an it. Jesus describes Him as He. So as we have mentioned, He's a person. The Holy Spirit does, however, provide the power to manifest the new nature of Christ in the life of a believer. And so, yes, while there is the person, He also has the power. We look at John 7, verse 37 to 39, again from the ESV. And from verse 37, it says, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this is said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. An amazing portion of scripture. And as we look at the background to this particular text, then we will see that deep down inside of us, there's a new nature which is deposited so that the new reality could be our portion. So at the heart of this new nature, in terms of the deposit, is a person, namely the Holy Spirit. He is the one that makes sure that the waters flow. That is, he makes sure that the full assortment of supernatural resources are available to the believer. That's to you and to me. He also ensures that the water does not stagnate and that the new nature is working. And that's why that is good news for you and it's good news for me. Now, because it flows from the innermost part, we can see that spiritual growth takes place deep inside of the believer. Now, figuratively speaking, the word rivers is due to the effects of the operation of the Holy Spirit in and through the believer. In some instances, Vine's expository dictionary also relates this word rivers to flood. And this made me think that if you and I were so full of the Holy Spirit, it could cause a flooding in our lives. And how does a flood occur? But when a substance is coming into a vessel or a catchment area and it has more capacity than what the vessel or the catchment area has to receive. And we know that the capacity of the Holy Spirit is great enough to cause a flooding in our lives. Oh, that is why it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit would flood out some things in our life, whatever is not of Him. So I'm praying that He would flood out our wrong thoughts of us being powerless, that He would flood out our insecurities that we deem ourselves to be defeated. I'm praying that He will flood out any doubt within us that we are indeed significant. May He do all of this as He lives in us and fills us day by day. I'm praying that He will be greater in you than your sickness and your diseases. May He be greater in you than that which so easily ensnares and entangles you. You see, the problem is that most Christians are depending on themselves to produce the development of growth and victory inside of them. A lot of people believe that spiritual growth comes about by virtue of willpower alone. Beloved, replacing our old nature with a new one 
is not something we do on our own. The Holy Spirit empowers us to bring forth that growth as He continuously fills us. Now, due to the Holy Spirit being there, as the Scripture has said, the assumption has to be that you and I cannot do this by ourselves. Yet many trying to produce a growth in themselves which only the Holy Spirit can produce. You see, newborn babies don't try to grow. They grow purely or by virtue of that which has been placed inside of them by God. Without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, there would be no spiritual progress in your life or in my life. Without Him, you would not be able to have the power to overcome timidity or to break free from bad habits or sin patterns in your life. You see, a strong will can help, but it certainly is not enough. Therefore, if you are tired and weary of trying to make your spiritual life work, tired of trying to gain victory on your own, then you need to start relying on the person of the Holy Spirit. Remember, He is the great helper, as Jesus said, and He will help you. He will enable you as you abide with Him and He with you. Remember Jesus' words in John 14, 17, He will abide with you and will be in you. So the big question is therefore, how do I engage this new personalized helper? How does that become a reality for me? It's a very good question, and so it leads us to our third point that we're going to be focusing on this day. So our third point is presence. And for this particular one, we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 18 and 19 once more from the ESV. From verse 18 then. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. From this text, we read that we should not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Other translations speaks of dissipation or excess. In other words, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to wastefulness or leads to loss. So why would the Bible use the analogy of being drunk? Why does it seem as if God is giving us permission to be intoxicated, as it were? It's a very good question. And I know that you may be saying to me right now, Marlon, how is that going to happen since we are in lockdown and there's a ban on liquor? How are you and I going to become drunk? Because I believe that God wants you and me to become spiritually inebriated. You see, there's an invitation to be a drunkard, just not a drunkard on wine. There is something better because becoming drunk on wine will lead to you losing out or bringing loss in your life. But he says that we should be filled, so we, we need to be filled with something. And in our context, it is more than a something, it is a someone, namely the Holy Spirit. Now bear with me for a moment as we look at this analogy. You see, when a person is drunk, they come under what we say, the influence. The alcohol affects the brain, and they begin to change their personality. How many of us haven't seen quiet people become loud all of a sudden? They have drunk so much that they are full of it. They're full of alcohol, and now the alcohol is dictating the agenda. So the alcohol says to them, we are sleeping now, and they sleep. Or it says that we are singing now, and you and I both know they can't keep two chords together, but they will sing. The alcohol removes the passivity of some, turning them into aggressive people, and they can't help it. Why? Because they are under the influence. Something else is dictating their behavior because they are full of it. Beloved, you and I must become full of Him. The word filled here in this context means to cause to abound, to furnish or supply liberally. Differently stated, it is also to fall to the top so that nothing shall be wanting. So let's get back to our analogy for a moment. You see, once the person stops drinking, after a while, the effects of the alcohol wears off and the person is back to their natural self again. And we all know that very often they would stand in disbelief 
and complete amazement when others tell them what they did or even what they said when they were drunk. Now remember, you don't get drunk by looking at liquor, nor do you get drunk by talking about liquor. You don't even get drunk by hanging out with people who are drinking liquor. You get drunk by drinking. And the more you drink, the drunker you become. So why is it that many believe that they can enjoy the fullness of God and be under complete control of the Holy Spirit by simply looking at what He's doing in the lives of others? Or talking about what He's doing in the lives of others? Or even just hanging around those who God is working in and working through? It simply is not going to work. You need to drink for yourself. I need to drink for myself. You need a personal relationship and an ongoing encounter with the Holy Spirit if you're really going to live in His fullness. So why become satisfied with what He's doing in the lives of others when He can do the same in your life? Why only read about testimonies of others when you can have a testimony? He must have full control. You must come under His control and under His influence. So where does the part of the presence come in? Well, the Holy Spirit functions in that which is spirit. Because remember, He is the Holy Spirit. Therefore, verse 19 provides us with the key, I believe. The Holy Spirit fills up an environment which is filled with worship. Verse 19 says to us, and it speaks about addressing one another with songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. The Holy Spirit's presence in your life comes about, among other things, through your worship. And because He is the Spirit of truth, as Jesus said, also the time that you spend in God's Word. Now, one aspect of that worship is the songs that we sing in our services. These songs are not just there to fill the program or because they sound nice or it's a nice thing to do. No, it is done because it brings us to a place where we experience His presence. Our problem is often that most of us worship as an event and not as a lifestyle. If you want the continuous presence and power of the Holy Spirit in your life, then worshiping at a Sunday service, a conference, or other special events will never ever be enough for you. You and I need a lifestyle of worship and getting into God's Word. Now, as we bring this message to a close, we do so by extending an invitation to you this day. In the last mention of the Holy Spirit in the Bible, we read in Revelation 22 and verse 17 the following words. The Spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. And what do we do with water? We drink it. So family, there is an invitation to partake of the living water which the Holy Spirit offers. Will you accept that invitation today? Remember our three points once again. Firstly, person. The Holy Spirit is personal, so you should have a personal relationship with Him. Secondly, power. The Holy Spirit is powerful and He empowers you to grow and live a life of victory. Thirdly, there's the presence. The Holy Spirit longs for your presence, even as you should long for His, so that He may fill you where you are under His control and under His influence. So perhaps today, you don't have a personal relationship with Him. Or maybe today, you'd be real honest and say that you're trying to sort out your life on your own, in your own power, but it's not working. And instead of having victory in certain areas or over certain addictions or things that are troubling you, you feel defeated. Or perhaps your desire is abiding presence in your daily life, where you are more under His control, where He can do extraordinary things in and through your life and not just in the life of others. If that is the case, then I want to pray for you this very day. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you this day for the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, thank you that you've sent us another helper, 
another just like you. And so, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are a person. It is our prayer that we would have a more personal relationship with you. We thank you as well for the power which you produce inside of us, power to overcome whatever is still holding us back, power to be set free of those bondages and addictions and bad habits. We thank you that it is your desire to help and aid us to be free and rid of all of those things. Thank you as well for your presence. We pray that we would have the abiding presence of you wherever we may go, every single moment of our lives, in our workplaces, Lord, our marriages, in our schooling, our studies, in our ministry, in everything that you call us to do. We desire your presence. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you need any more prayer or any ministry, then we want to encourage you. Make use of the contact details on the screen. Uh, contact somebody, and I'm sure they would love to help you with whatever it is you need assistance with. We look forward to hearing from you, and we know that the Holy Spirit will do a great work in your life. Remember that you can enjoy the person, power, and presence of the Holy Spirit every single day and every moment of your life. Enjoy the journey, and God bless you. What a fantastic service, and um, thank you, Pastor Marlon for such a wonderful message um, on Holy Spirit. And um, would like to encourage everyone as we end this service today um, that we walk and remember that Holy Spirit, um, He's our lead, He's our guide. He's the voice that we should listen to. And um, right now, I also want to remind you that um, we have our lead pastors that are waiting to um, have, you know, to connect with you if you've got any questions or you would like to know more about us as a church, or um, you can actually just contact the number which is on your screen right now. And also, uh, our Facebook page, um, it's active. Interact with us and um, get to know us even more. But also what's very important is that tonight we have our encounter service, which is continuing. We encourage you to connect and have lots of fun and encounter God at that moment. Thank you very much and God bless. Your eyes, in the face of life's mysteries, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. I'll never walk alone, I'll never walk alone with you by my side, with you by my side. Bye.
says no one go say the word and i will follow 